Hi, welcome back to Deeper Conversations. This is me, your host, Matthew Silvers, and we are back with my best friend, Irina. <laughs> um, and today, we, if you saw last week's episode, you know that I talked about protection and HIV and things like that. Um, first of all, I want to, again, come from a place where I've done research on it, but I still haven't there's always more to learn. There's always more to understand. So I want to make sure like if there's any feedback from that last episode, um, I moving forward, like always, I'll still be continuing to learn. I'll still be updating you guys, you know, like there's never enough talk about these things. So I'll talk about them more, but we're here today to talk about the fun things about sex. We are going to get deep into what we think the talk should look like. Um, nowadays because I think we can agree that it's definitely a lot of people's talks are very outdated some don't even get the talk anymore because they think it's unnecessary um but we're gonna talk about it so where to begin should we just should we just start with that then yeah I get well well here let me and let me start with it. what we were talking about yeah what what just like so there's like a I think it's important to start with the the story that I just told you because then that way it leads in like yeah, leads perfectly it. into so go it. For it. So I recently um, I don't want to call it a date. He said a hangout he, when when we met in person. This is this a huge like, hey. communication thing that like obviously we talked about communication. We're still going to talk about communication, but like. <laughs> the word hangout and chill y'all need to clarify what y'all mean whether you want to yeah, hang out because chill, it, it does make it really tricky is it because a lot of people question is a hangout like a date or, or sex or or sex or is it like a friendly friendship? yeah right like it, yeah. it's it's like yeah. when you say hangout when a guy asks the girl to hang out they they don't know what that means like yep. that could literally mean anything yeah but anyway i was asked to hang out with this guy and I was like, sure, he had a great personality. I really liked what I saw so far. Um, but like something, I don't know if any of you guys know this yet. I mean, from the previous podcast, I haven't, I'm not really dating right now. Um, but um, it is really tricky because I oftentimes wonder if I should kind of state that at the beginning if someone asks me out or sort like that kind of thing or if should I wait till after to see if they're like even interested yeah. at the beginning you know and that's always that's such a hard thing to figure out um when, when a guy is asking you whether it's just a hangout or just a date or or anything like that that's a hard thing to figure out um like what to say for that specific thing yeah. Anyway, I ended up saying, sure, it sounds great. Like, let's do something sometime. Um, and so we ended up me uh, meeting up. The guy was great. He has a great personality. He's so kind. I mean, he likes cats. I always feel like that's a good sign. <laughs> is it? It is. Have, but, that, that's a very but different that, that's, sign that's for a, me. No, no, that's a, it's a different story. There's, there's a reason, and this is specifically for straight men um okay. not not for any other men it, it's for straight men specifically if they in if they like if they hate okay let's rephrase this if they hate cats with a passion that's bad anything else is fine see uh, i just think that's just a pet thing i fucking hate cats and and but again that's very different usually when a guy who is straight that says that they hate cats um God, it, it's like very off topic. Anyway, we'll have to talk yeah, about let's go. Let's go back. <laughs> um, so you went anyway, out. Yeah. So anyway, um, we he's a great guy. We went on on two hangouts, I guess is what you call it. Um, I'm again not interested in dating anyone right now. And um, he on the second hangout asked if he could kiss me and it was just like I was very awkward I was like uh, 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 you know like very just like not fully there um and then I ended up saying not right now and it's because nothing else could come to my brain at the moment um and he was very cool very chill about it he's like it's not like it's no problem like I don't have an issue and then the next day I 
I texted him and I was like, hey, like, I'm sorry about the awkwardness. It, it was because it was a little bit, I mean, at least for me, I don't know if it was for him, but it was a bit awkward for me. And then I kind of explained um, that I was not in a place in my life right now where I wanted to date. Um, but I would absolutely love to keep hanging out that I loved his company. I thought he was a great guy. Um, and he ended up saying, well, that is what I'm looking for right now. And I don't have time for anybody else except for, you know, potentially a girlfriend. So he said he wasn't making time for friends or anything like that, which, you know, like at the moment was a little frustrating because when I met him, he was out with friends. Um, but then it was, I guess like for, for women, I guess it's a little different, um, than it is for men. And actually I found this out by talking to my dad about it, which is actually right on topic about what we're about to talk about and why it's so important to be able to talk to, to people who are not necessarily like your specific sex yeah. Um, just because you can find insight that you wouldn't have even thought about unless talking to them, you know? Right. And so I was talking to my dad about it and he said that it, it often is different with at least heterosexual men. I'm not sure what it is for the yeah. LBGTQ, but for heterosexual men, oftentimes what ends up happening is if they realize they like you or if they want to hook up with you they will see absolutely nothing else that is all they are focused on and all they can focus on so oftentimes if you reject a guy or say that you're not ready for that sort of level they're gonna they're they're not gonna be able to be friends with you because at the moment they had their heart set on something completely different yeah. Um, and that's why it's so important, again, to talk with other people about it um, that aren't your specific gender. Yeah. Because you find out so much helpful and good information about it. Um, like most people don't know this, um, and I'm sure most families don't even do this, but when my family had the sex talk both my brother and I were there and both my mom and dad were there they were not separate about it and my dad pointed out something Mm -hmm. that I thought was really important and really stuck out to me and he said that it is really important that you get both sides of the story both the male perspective and the female perspective yeah Um, but anyway so that that leads on to what what we're focusing on today yeah which is like what we think the new talk should be. Uh, well, at least that's a little bit of what we're going to talk about because it won't take that long. Like, I think it's very obvious. Like, for one, I think parents should have a talk with their children. No Always. Matter yeah. What. Um, second of all, I think we can all agree. Um, so like for me, like my little story, like obviously she just told a little bit of like the talk that she had. The talk that I had wasn't necessarily a talk. I got sat down. Uh, my sister got sat down with my mom um, and my dad gave me a book. My mom gave my sister, I think, the same book. We like went over the pages and I was just sitting there confused. By the way, this was when I was living in Montana. So I was 12, 13. Um, and spoiler alert. <laughs> ah, spoiler alert. I have been told. Oh my god i haven't told a single soul this um so when i was 12 13 freshman year of high school uh was when i started watching the p word uh, i was watching porn <laughs> and again nobody knew this about me my sister i still haven't talked about she caught me once um using the computer <laughs> Um, and it was gay porn. I feel like though, I feel like though, fans would be porn. very chill about that. But I know, but gay porn. <laughs> I know, but you know, faith. Yeah, but like, so it was gay porn, and then I was doing. You guys, there are some weird gay porn shit that you can look at. Like, you can look at animated princes from the Disney movies having sex. I was into that for. Oh, a you while. can, you can, you can. I was into all the porn. like, all the like 
Marvel characters and like their <laughs> fake penises. Oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> so anyways, I got, but I got the, so during that like porn stages, I got the talk and it was very heterosexual, but it wasn't a talk. Like my dad just said, like, basically, I think it was like, use a condom. Here's the book, read it. It was like some stupid ass, like kids book about like the birds and the bees. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it doesn't talk about, it's not descriptive at all. Um, and so obviously I had to learn all by myself. Um, and let's be like, not, and not in the porn way, like porn's not a place to go learn about sex. That shit's like over dramatized like obviously like a lot of it's fake with the like stepbrother stuff and the like fraternity stuff and like all of that shit like is like staged and everything um so I had to learn but so I like okay so for one everyone should be having it uh two it should be a hell of a lot more inclusive um in the way for sure that, yeah like it's just talking about sex and like talking about straight sex now, at the time, if they do or do not know, like if they do know, then like obviously you don't really like. Let's just say like, if I had the talk and I already came out, like I feel like it's okay just to talk about like maybe gay sex. But even then, I guess you could be inclusive. But I think it should talk about heterosexual sex. It should talk about homosexual sex and just sex in general in between, because um, there are obviously well, I think that's more to be to be completely honest. I I feel like that's more for. And whereas the talk with family is really important, I think that specific talk, what you're saying right here, should be taught in schools. Like this whole bullshit thing about, about having sex ed, but it doesn't teach you jack squat. Like I agree with that. Yeah. Like this is ridiculous. So it's it doesn't just apply to to parents or or you know yes. whoever's taking care yeah. of you. It also applies to school. Agreed. As well. But yeah, so it should be inclusive. It should be talked about um, both. I mean, I would say probably both in, in school and with parents. Um, well, the reason why this conversation is Unless so they don't awkward. know enough. Because I feel like schools, schools, if they had a program, would have to teach like very specific things, like whole units on it. But like parents might have a five minute conversation about it and it's yeah, and that's still different. not going to be enough. The, the one thing that I will say with the, par the parent conversations is you can talk about having sex without putting a gender on it. Yes. Like yeah, a, a lot true. of like, uh, like, for example, my parents specifically didn't talk about intercourse. Yeah. They talked about if someone, if you say no to someone, you should feel confident in saying no and yeah. feeling comfortable so, in yeah so, so it's what like, should what it should more the about parent, the protection what should you know? the parents one include so consent consent incredible um, both obviously I, both ways because think about it parents don't want to talk about actual intercourse correct so i think what what it's mainly for parents what it's mainly about it's like protection. the intercourse stuff should be for school okay but for parents it should be about safety Yep. about wearing well that also wearing a condom yeah. includes safety but also being aware of what you want and being okay with vocalizing it you know and I agree and I would say like even like well so like I know this is gonna sound crazy but like and it's like hard because you know it, it's not like your kid's gonna go to well unless you have really cool parents and you're really safe and really fucking close with them and they appreciate you and they accept you like that's awesome and those parents like you would probably go to them and be like i just had sex for the first time but like most people aren't gonna do that but i do feel like if I even parent, i didn't do that right but if i was a parent i didn't either are you fucking kidding me i feel like if i was a parent though when i'm a parent i feel like if my kid like may be gay and obviously I'm not going to assume, but I would probably just be like, listen, whenever you start wanting to have sex, like, I feel like I'd be like, okay with it. I feel like I totally understand. I respect it. But like, I want you to be as safe as you want. Like, I would probably start prep with them. Like, I want them to be like, that's like the extra protection that I'd want. Just yeah. And that's like, the ideal world. But do you, do you know why? Like people, like a lot of parents are hesitant and a lot of people are hesitant to talk about having sex. It's, I mean, it's kind of because of the patriarchy. If you yeah. think about it, our government, our, you know, our society, like makes it frowned upon to talk about. And anyone who does, like, think about it. It even affects, it, it even affects like 
heterosexual men, it affects them because it's so awkward to talk about. They don't learn the knowledge they need to pleasure women or they don't learn the knowledge mm-hmm. they need to learn t- to make sex a, a wonderful experience for everyone, you know? And so, and that's partially because we are not taught what we needed to talk because we are we are made to think that it's awkward and inappropriate to talk about when in reality, to make things work, to make people happy, to, to make this a good experience for everyone, it is so incredibly important to talk about. And I mean, this is a different topic, but the reason why women oftentimes get um, the least out of it is partially because of control like the control that yeah. that the patriarchy wants to I have over them. An and that's ideal, very yeah. that's a different conversation but but i think essentially an, like yeah I we need to break that to, to make to make this agreed. conversation relevant. i think in an ideal world like obviously like schools would teach sex but i feel like it would go so into it like i don't even fucking can i be quite frank i don't even remember what anything about health class except for one thing and it was the fucking video where i had to watch it i do remember that a pregnant woman come out or a pregnant woman birth a child and it was like this black bubble and the head just pops out and i was yeah. like what the fuck the that's I, basically all i remembered i do actually remember health class and that's probably what they did for like the male health class yeah was they probably taught you like barely anything and then showed you the video we didn't even but get the first, banana talk which like i think is a little outdated but also, that's like, horrible well no but like i mean talk? i think talking about condoms is incredible like but the banana thing seems i don't know maybe putting a condom on that a banana. explains why there have been so many men that don't know how to put on condoms well, okay, there was so a guy here's that the thing. i had to sleep with that didn't I'm, know how to put on a condom i'm this is about to be i love this okay i would rather a like okay health class i think is important like i think diseases and things should be talked about but i think i'd much rather like that be the small portion of it Like I, you know, like talking about, you know, cancer and diabetes and eating. I I remember eating healthy. was We only got the only, so, so besides the video that we got, we took, we got, we got quizzes and tests, but also learn knowledge about the male organs and our organs, but we never talked about intercourse. Yeah. And and that's true. And I think like, I think it has a huge thing with like health class being connected to PE. Like they talk a lot about, I remember, obviously they talk a lot about physical health. And then they, another conversation we're not having is they never fucking talk about mental health. No, but so they talk so about important. so they talk about the food groups. They take a long time to talk about food groups. They take a lot of time to like talk about exercise and what it can do for you and your BMI and trying to be a healthy person in this world, which also is very uh, slim. Which includes mental health. Like you it's have true, to include but like the, health. the health that they're talking about is like a very standard model slim body. Like they don't even accept like. Yeah. your bodies as healthy which is something that needs to be normalized so here's my it here's has my to be because the skinny i'm sorry but yeah and i'm a model so this is weird for me to say but do not idolize models because here half of them are anorexic i'm, I'm gonna be dead absolutely completely serious with you half of them are anorexic yeah so do not idolize models. Even the male models, some of them are anorexic. Like some of the stories that I've heard of some people that have dated, like there have been some men who are so scared of having any form of fat on their body that they like starve themselves yeah. in a not okay way. So so like so do not look yeah. to to models as as a healthy dose. And I'm a yeah. healthy model. Like I I will say that, like, I eat well, like, and you can't, that, that, that's the thing too. You can't make judgments based on how skinny someone is because that could also be their body type. Just yeah, like everyone if someone gets is a body bigger, from genetics. Too. Exactly. If someone is bigger, it doesn't mean that they're like, they're unhealthy. It just means that their body's built bigger. Just like if someone's skinny, it doesn't mean that they're anorexic. It just means that their body might metabolize things a lot faster. So yeah. you can't really tell who's anorexic or who's, you know, bulimic or whatever. Like you, you can't really tell that. Yeah. 
So, so we have to stop making judgments on how people are supposed to look because yeah. it's, it's, it, everyone's different. If we all ate the same, if we all exercise the same, I cannot stress this enough. We yeah. would all still look completely different. Yeah. So here's my thought. So my thought is in schools, there needs to be fuck a health class. I don't want it to be called health class. I don't want it to be called that. I'd rather it be called something like an intimacy course. Like yeah. I, I feel like that's appropriate intro, you know, because, an intro to health class. Yes. Or something. Like, well, no, I just like, I want it to be called an intimacy course because I think it involves everything. Like, so yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protection in all forms prep but whatever. also for the males not just for the no females. Right, right. fuck sep- i'm sorry fuck separating males and women's they sorry. should be in the same class together they should like, be in the class no matter what separating. we're talking about so there should be an inclusivity in bodies inclusivity in sexual orientation because that should be allowed in schools uh every body type should be shown um always yeah for so each, protection like i said protection gender. in all cases um and then the health portion, diseases and all of that should be the thing that takes a month and everything else should be talking about intimacy, intercourse, um, which includes consent. Like that should be like at least a week. And then uh, obviously the, a huge chunk of it should be mental health. And I even would go as far to say, which is why I like it being called an intimacy course, I think, you know how I talked about, I feel like the banana method is like, great. Every dick size is different. Yeah. And I think like, I know this stuff is talked about in like ninth, 10th grade. I was 13, 14, which seems young. I think it's just the right time to be given a case of condoms to individually have to walk into the bathroom and put one on one at a time. The one thing that I will also point out that sex ed didn't teach us. Sorry, my cat's scratching at the door. I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to fix that. Just give me a second. But, um, but they didn't teach us to stretch the condoms before putting them on, which is, I don't know if like if any of you guys know this, but that's extremely important because it helps prevent the condom from breaking. And then I'm going to go take care of my cat. I just think there's so much we have to figure out on our own and we shouldn't have to. And we should exactly. Yeah. I feel like to be quite frank as well, I know this is something that's quite probably a hot topic. I don't. I think we should reevaluate who is teaching these health courses as well as the PE teachers. Exactly. I think it should be separate from the PE teachers. They don't have the education to be teaching this kind of information. Yeah. But I also think they should be separated because if you look at the people who are teaching PE, they all look the same. And again, a plus size person teaching PE isn't the issue. (sighs) But... It's all about participation and PE, you only do sports. <laughs> I That's feel true. like in PE, you should, um, I can't think, hold on. You should be taught participation and team building. And I think the PE teacher should um, participate as well. And I, I don't know about, well, I guess we kind of, I don't know who you had for PE. I honestly don't fucking remember. Um, but I feel like it's important for like the PE teacher to be involved with the sports. You yeah. know, they sat on the sidelines and just like watched us play. They would blow the whistle when it was time to like exchange people. Um, sometimes I have would... one PE teacher that would go running yeah. with us. I love that. Yeah, we would like run. And, but like he was mile. he was the fit one, which was yeah. kind of like but that's nice at least you had someone being like let's do this like we're just taught to like let go and do it ourselves and and whatnot and to be quite frank I would even go as far as to say in PE class we like we're just learning basic sports why aren't we learning like how to work out properly if that's something somebody wants to do because it's not like good it's not proper at all good for like 
I would go as far to say, I feel like PE teachers should be um, physical therapists slash personal trainers. Like, I feel like, I agree. I feel like high school teachers who are teaching it PE, sh- it should be, be the there same. should be at least one physical therapist there to talk about that side. And then one personal trainer there as well. And I'm talking about like big bodies too. Like, if you don't want to work out, that's fine. PE is required. I think it should be required. I think like if a bigger person's going in with that mindset, and by the way, like, obviously I was a bigger person back in, back in high school, like I would have appreciated the time and commitment that they took to teach us good form. If that's something we want to, if that's something we want to do, like everyone should be required to do it. And then if they don't want to continue forward a after high school or B, like, just like after or before they go to school, like during that same period, I feel like that should be, um, that should be something that should happen. Like, you know, teaching good form in squats and in push-ups and whatever, but we're basically taught, here's this test that's going to stress you out, embarrass you, freak you out, whatever the fuck, what is it called? The pacer test? The fucking pacer test? Oh my God. I have a story on the pacer uh, test too. Once you're but, done. So I just like, that shit's great. Like, to talk like whatever like you want to know your bmi index like cool great that shouldn't be the main focus but like that's all you do is you do the pacer test what i think you do the pacer test every three months or something right it's something like that yeah Maybe. i think it's every but like you do four- the, yeah and then you test your your fucking knowledge and then you fucking go play sports and it's not like you know whatever they do teach you i remember a couple times i don't know if it was every time but i know we were taught to stretch before the workout which is like a a good thing to teach yeah that was like like the one good thing that they taught but like that's one out of that's one out of a million things and i also think that there should be a huge talk about um locker room etiquette i feel like that's important i don't know about for women i don't know about that but i know for men's at least for my locker room experience and this isn't true for every woman's like or even any any other woman's locker experience because I the girls that I was surrounded with at my gym not my gym but like my um my gym class yeah happened to be like wonderful people so yeah. like they they didn't do anything out of the ordinary yeah but and i'm not talking should, about I, like I it should be taught yeah i'm not talking about high school drama like girls are going to talk in the fucking locker room about the petty ass shit and like probably talk about like skinny models and things like that like men are probably going to talk about fit people in sports and whatever i'm talking about like the wandering eyes, the gay shit that they say that isn't gay, even though they're doing it. And like, again, like if you want to explore, like that's not, that's doesn't bother me. That's not the, that's not, that's the, not place the point. To do it. That's not the, yeah, it's not, yeah. but like it should be talked about and like whatever. And like, if here's the, here's the other issue, because if it's, if it is somebody who's gay and his eyes wander, I'm not saying that's okay, but I'm saying that's uh, somewhat part of, you may be exploring yourself um yeah and like obviously if your eyes are wondering you're gonna start to wonder and your mind is gonna whatever but if someone catches you you know then then that's when the, the issue comes they're gonna beat you up they're gonna and that's where the, the bullying F-slur. starts which you. is they're not gonna, okay they're yeah. gonna ostracize you they're gonna whatever like that's not okay you're also I remember in high school in life- I remember when you're trying to figure that out. I remember so in it's high like school, they shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I remember in high school when I went to go change, like I'd be so nervous and I, it's so weird. And think like I've changed a lot, like obviously, like the, but when I would change, like I would get nervous about my weight. I would get nervous about my underwear. Like I would be like, I don't feel like I'm wearing sexy enough underwear. Like I don't, whatever. Like I don't feel like, you know, and I would look like, to be quite frank, like I would look at some other people and I would wonder like, I'm not as fit. I'm not like it. And, and, but the reason I was feeling that way is just like in the real world, because it still is happening a shit ton. We're trying to fix it, but it's still happening a shit ton. The, in high school, there's all these fit guys and all of these fit guys are still only talking to each other and nobody fit is going to come up and talk to me. Like nobody's, you know, whatever. Um, and again, and so, that has a lot to do with the patriarchy and thinking right. that they're better than you. Right. And so like, and again, like that's also a lack of confidence on my part because bitch, if I was this confident back in high school, nothing would have stopped me. Like I would have been that bitch. 
Um, again, glad that I didn't it build character, like character development. Yeah, it but, does. But anyways, does I digress. Character. Those are the things that I <laughs> think that should be taught in PE separately. Obviously, like I said, those are the things that should be taught in what I would like to call an intimacy course rather than yeah. health and PE I, or health. Excuse me. I feel like I don't think I miss anything. So like inclusivity in bodies, inclusivity in sexual orientation, protection, consent, mental health. Um, what else did we say? I think that was all, right? I think that was all, but I also have something to say on yeah. the whole PE section. Yeah. The reason why it is so important to not have basic people trying to teach PE, and I don't mean basic in a rude way. Like, I mean, people, people who, who know really what they're don't doing. have the knowledge. The of degree for PE and health shouldn't be It's so low. It's it shouldn't be low. education. It, it, it's it's too low it doesn't they nobody has like a physical fitness degree when they're going to teach PE like it's it's a it's a course that can be taught by anyone which yeah. shouldn't be the case and here's why and I actually have a story as to why um I say this because because I experienced PE in a way that that at the time I didn't realize that there was anything wrong with me and of course I wouldn't know that because what I'm, I'm in high school, like what I'm 17, 16, 15, you know, in that age range, you know, yeah. and, and I didn't realize that there was health wise, anything wrong with me. And so I couldn't figure out why a skinny thick girl couldn't run the pacer and, and the pacer isn't built for someone who has asthma or who is asthmatic. So the, the issue it's it's built for people who are physically fit and have the ability to, to, to keep speeding up. Whereas someone who has asthma, yep. they have to take cardio at a little bit lighter pace. I'm about and, to, sorry, and for I me, just. No worries, no worries. For me, physical fitness is more about muscle toning. So like doing abs, like a tiny bit of weights, you know, like, yeah, I can do a little bit of cardio, but I have to keep my cardio to a minimum because yeah. if my, if my airway uh -huh. gets to like, if I get, if I have trouble breathing, it only gets worse at that mm. point. I mean, and I so would disagree of course that, at that yeah. Okay. Of course, at that point, I didn't know I had asthma. So by the time I was done with the pacer, not only was I below like health regulations. Yeah. I also tasted blood Ugh. and saw stars. Yeah. Which is not okay. Yeah. But again, they're not going to know to diagnose me with that. And they're not going to know that I'm not physically fit. You know, like they're not going to know that. But clearly, I looked physically fit. And I right. was. So, no, I agree. Because so I, I totally... played soccer and did sports. Yeah. So. I think the thing that strikes me to what you're saying I think is the fact that PE right now in schools is a one size fits all model and that's just exactly again, yeah. people aren't that way in any form any shape or form we're not a one size fits all for sex for uh physical health for mental health for you know whatever like it's just <laughs> not one size fits all so it's such a struggle to see that in the gyms um, and that's why, again, I think that's why there should be at least one physical therapist there. I think we should be teaching form and actual workout exercises and things like that, not just playing badminton with your fucking hands, um, as yeah. well as like a, a physical a personal trainer there that can help you as well. I think these yeah, are the things that are could potentially, because also <clears throat> it's not just having a, a specific like having asthma like it does contribute but it's not just about that it's also about different body types like mm -hmm. again with you saying Matthew that it's like it only fits one body type you're completely absolutely right because working out <clears throat> the specific workouts they do in PE doesn't just fit everyone like I just got, I just got it's, so excited it's, because it's a workout <clears throat> for like for specific body types and it's whereas so... other body types need to do different workouts to, to lose the fat yeah. that they have. So it's, it's, again, it's dependent on the body the entire I time. Would, this yeah. workout has to be different for us for the specific body type. And if yeah. you only do one 
specific workout for one body type, of course, these kids aren't going to get the healthy weight that they need. I would even go again, even I'm so excited to share this thought. I would even go as far as to say the patriarchy stems so close to PE. Yes. The taser (laughs) test is a competition to see who is the most physically fit. And yes. that person it's always about is competition. going to inflate. You know what it should look like? PE should look like the end of cars. PE should look like Lightning McQueen going always. to help the Dynaco car when he crashes because of the fucking green car, whatever the fucking hell their names are, and pushes him to the fucking finish line. That's what it should look like. That's what it should be. But because of the pettiness and the drama and the competition, it's all like, I can do more push-ups than you. I can do more sit-ups than you. Thank you for being evil and thank you for starting your villain origin story and telling me that I'm going to be better than you in life later on. Well, that's what the patriarchy is all about. It's about pinning people against each other. That's always what it has always been about and it affects everyone. Not just, not just people who are overweight, like it affects the fit people too, because I mean, let's be honest, like it's, it, it, it gives them the mindset that everything's a competition when in reality, we want, we want everyone to be on the same team. We want to be team players. Yep. Yep. Like, you want to join a sport, join the after-school sport, join the sports team that's not attached to your school. The gym is, like we said, a place for sportsmanship. It is not the place where you're training your Olympic trainers. That exactly. shouldn't be what it's for. No. Stop training them there. And that's there. exactly that's what they try to make area. it for. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so I think that covers that little bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then, so like for parents, I think, like we said, for parents, I think it we should really be about protection. It should be about consent. Um And that is like, again, like they're slightly different for maybe who you want to be with and whatnot. It's not too far off, Um, but you know, condoms, consent is a, consent should be a universal thing. Um, It shouldn't be gender. When a parent is talking to you, it should not be be gender specific. I, I, and I agree. I agree. I think everything, and and it can, you know, I think a parent should take the time to write this down to, and it doesn't have to be long, maybe like 30 minutes of any day of any time between that your kid is born and like the ages of, what do you think the appropriate ages to do it? I think it's probably around 13, like freshman year of high school, maybe. Yeah. Um, Like right before they start or maybe eighth grade. The one thing I will say, and this will be a little gross. I had my period in fourth grade. So I don't think there is a specific appropriate time to do it. I think it should be any time that feels well, within that really, time okay. range, you should start. Yeah. It's when, it, I think it should be when it starts, but I think in general, it should be talked about all the time and it shouldn't be a I, humiliation yes. or embarrassment to talk about because this is so vital and so important to everyone's health Yep, and everyone's sanity. Yeah. And I, uh, I really like the idea of when parents have the talk with you, like we said, it should be non-gendered. I think they should go deep. And I think that should also be where they talk about HIV, AIDS, uh, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and telling them the things that like, hey, if you get gonorrhea, it's 100% treatable. Don't freak out. It, this, there's this stigma, like this is just the specific one I'm picking because, you know, obviously I just went through it. Um, you know, don't freak out. It's 100% treatable. We'll go get whatever it is they treat you with, whether that be a shot, some places are pills, et cetera, et cetera, some are both. Yeah. Um, let's go get it. We'll be fine. Like, these are the things that your pa- like, you might not want to go to your parents when you're like, I just had sex. But like, I feel like I would want my kid to be comfortable enough to be like, I did have sex. I got gonorrhea. Can we not talk about the sex part? But can you help me with this? That's like, yeah. that's when I feel like I've done my job as a parent. It should be taught. And it's also something you shouldn't be ashamed about having. That's what having I'm saying. Having sexual transmitted disease. I mean, like, yes, it's not ideal. It's not what anything want, like anyone no wants. No one to wants have, it, but it happens. But it shouldn't be shamed because guess what? Everyone gets it. Yeah. Like everyone gets that. Everyone gets some form of like sexually transmitted disease. Yeah. And it shouldn't be shamed because guess what? It's, it's. 
it's just not a big deal. No. It's not as big. And of it's a funny because, like, on my side, people make it seem. On my side, I've gotten chlamydia and gonorrhea at this point, and I feel confident and proud enough to say that. And I feel, uh, in a way, in a very strange, weird way, I feel proud to be able to have done that experience to spread. If I hadn't gotten chlamydia the first time, I would have. It would have taken me a lot longer to realize and research the things about HIV that I know now, um, and unlearning all of the shit that I've already learned. And by this, you know, like I said, I got gonorrhea last week. Um, it would have, you know, scared me more if I hadn't gone through it the first time with chlamydia, et cetera, et cetera. Like it would have been so bad. And so, yeah, it should be taught when we're having these conversations, um, or when parents are having these conversations with their kids and like breaking the stigmas, like that's our responsibility. Well, I guess that's our parents' responsibility, but like, obviously now if we're going to have kids, like that's our responsibility. Yeah. And talking just to get more and more progressive. Um, and that way I feel like they're going to be more comfortable with sex. Like, and kids need to realize as well, like kids are going to be like, Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, like I already know, like, uh, but like, it's important still. Like, and I think if they, of hear course it, kids are going to be like, Ugh, yeah. because guess what? They're like 10, like 13 and they're gonna be like we're not gonna have sex for so they're long and then you're gonna have grossed sex out by it exactly 16. they're always gonna feel yeah. grossed by it like grossed out by it but it doesn't mean that the conversation is any less important yeah yeah I feel like there was something else I was gonna oh but like because the fact that I've had chlamydia and gonorrhea the other thing is like hey it fucking happens shit happens on your side like dare I say like I'm not speaking for all women but I know a lot of women who have gotten chlamydia and it happens a lot oh, yeah. apparently for women and I, I didn't know that at first but like women I feel like don't talk about it they shouldn't be ashamed of it either like and I don't like and again men shouldn't be either because and and straight men need to go get tested much as a gay man needs to go get tested like this shit should be normalized. Like, this is so fucking yeah. frustrating. Like, we and need to get our shit together as a world. the crazy thing, too, is a ends. woman, unlike a man, can carry an STD for years before it becomes active. Yeah. So, alongside with men getting tested, I think it is also important for women to be aware of that and oh, also course. potentially get tested. Oh, my God, of course. Because you... You, like again there's nothing to be ashamed about it like you pro like you can contract them from somebody yeah go get tested make sure that you're okay because it's not just on the men to get tested it should also be on the women as well because guess what women can carry on like carry stds for years before it becomes activated whereas yeah. men if they have an std it's already prevalent yeah yeah I mean, and I, again, nothing to be ashamed of. Just go get tested, figure it out. If you need to get treated, get treated. Don't be ashamed. Yes, yes. Speaking of, so I want to transition to the sex part, but before we get to the fun part of sex, let's talk about, well, I don't know if you have anything as a straight person that you want to say, um, but as a gay person, there's, there's something I need to clap. I need to clap. I'm about to get serious. <laughs> Fuck. You're not mature enough to have sex if you think that shit's going to come out. If shit comes out and you're worried about it, if you're stressed about it, if you're going to cry about it, if you're going to shame someone, if you're going to get embarrassed because of it, shit happens. And that goes to tops or bottoms. Some bottoms are scared that to bottom because they think shit's going to happen. Too. If it happens, that's bottoms shouldn't be ashamed. And I don't know if it's because of top shaming bottoms, like, prior or they think the top's going to shame them or whatever. I'm a versatile human being. I have bottomed a lot recently, um, a lot more than I've topped, which is like, unlike me, like, again, I'm a, the most versatile human being, but I've frequently topped like before, but now I'm bottoming more and I've, saw, I've seen and done and a lot of things. And it's just like, it's fucking ridiculous. Like I've never, I've been in this situation like three different times, maybe probably more. Um, but like, Top shouldn't be like, first of all, we just had, I just had this conversation on TikTok and I want to make it in my podcast. Cleaning out is dangerous. You need to stop doing it. We're not going to normalize. Do it. it is so, and even for women, do not put anything up your vagina. 
do yeah. not it is so toxic it is so bad it met it messes with i will your, tell you what though with my your version? cleaning cycle do not put and this goes for men to yes. do not put any cleaning material up there if you want to clean out your body is naturally like even with soap do not do that it is so bad yeah. for your body some shit might come out that's fine clean up restart do it again whatever etc cetera, etc cetera. if you want to clean out four things you can do one if you feel like you can use the restroom do it um and if you don't like you can still go wipe and just see whatever get some you know whatever two i think it's okay i think it's safe enough to put your ass up in the air in the water in the shower and just you know whatever wash your ass up. obviously clean your ass please clean your ass what the fuck um like that's appropriate um but like you can open your ass but you really should not be having water go up there yeah but water like, I soap like, right i mean but here's the well, other thing is like so here's the two things that you can do as well like to clean out quote unquote take your fingers what take your fingers take a vibrator whatever that's a great like if it's already gonna go, like if something's already going up your ass like you might as well fucking like clean it out that way because like if you're gonna put a like if a dick's gonna go in your ass a vibrator is fucking fine you can use your vibrator first that shit's gonna probably come out using the vibrator and then when that person gets there you'll be quote unquote cleaned out but it's a lot safer way like we said like that shit's just lube obviously lube goes up your ass like yeah you just don't want like bunch of water up there it's gonna get like stuck and it adds, the, it's the so issue, bad for the your issue system. is it messes with your your yes. your chemical balance yes and it can lead to infection yes so and so and so do. i'm sorry for anybody who feels like they should i'm sorry for anybody that feels like they need to apologize but i'm here to tell you to stop fucking doing that you do not need yeah. to apologize for saying like oh my god i'm so sorry i didn't clean out you need to stop apologizing for um, shit might come out. Stop that. Both sides should learn. Both sides need to be mature enough to understand and realize that shit is going to come out. Uh, and it's not always. Um, I've had plenty of experiences where like nothing comes out and it's okay. By the way, I've never cleaned out once in my life and I've not had a lot of stuff come out. Some people are different. Some people have stomach issues and things like that. I've had sex with somebody who's had stomach problems completely fine. Like my dick comes out clean as a bow like there's not that much I feel like people think there's a lot more shit up there um and like I said this is a very complete honest podcast I've stuck my finger up somebody's ass before and I felt around and I felt like there was a turd just sitting there guess what I didn't do I didn't start freaking out I didn't take my finger out because it's not gross it's not whatever like it's you know including one night stands like this shit is so easy to clean off like, and if you need cleaning ways to fucking, I mean, obviously I think it's pretty obvious how to clean off your fucking hand, but like, if you need better ways to like figure that shit out, you let me know. I can, we can talk about it more and whatnot, but like, so I'll just say it one more time. You're, we need, this is sex is between two responsible, mature adults that need to understand whether you're topping or bottoming. There should be no shame. There should be no embarrassment. If you know, you know, that should be the level. Like if shit, ha that's the mutual agreement you need to do when you're having sex. If shit happens, it's okay. And I'm, I'm completely okay with you having like a boundary conversation. Like, like I said, like if, if one of you sees something, there should be no shame in being like, Hey, do you mind if I go clean off for two seconds, come back and we can, we can, I can either, you know, go back in or do blowjobs or whatever. I think that conversation is completely okay to have. Like that's a boundary you can set to be like, Hey, like if shit happens, I don't care. I would just like to clean it off. Like obviously, cause, and then that's the conversation where it's like, I want to continue with you. I think this is hot. I think it's attractive. I would just like to clean up. That is completely okay. That is completely yeah. fine. So I think if that's a conversation you want to have, do it. I feel like you should be honest and open about doing it. If you can't have that conversation again, we need to be responsible, communicative with adults. And if you can't do that, then that's- You have to you, say it up front. You need to be and honest. Th it, this all goes the same for women too. Like with yes. women on their period, again, it is not gross yes. to do that. Yep. If you have an issue with that, if you have an issue with, with having sex with a woman on her period, you should not be having sex. Yeah. Because actually ha a woman having sex on her period actually is- quite healthy for her yeah. it helps her menstrual cycle so so again if you are not mature enough to deal with a woman having a period you should not be having sex period nothing else said also that goes to say if someone farts queefs etc yeah if you 
if you can't handle someone farting, especially you after, after, like, especially during like after, that, I talked about like it on my you TikTok. You should not be having sex. What the fuck is like? If somebody I'm sorry. Fart, like if somebody farts during sex, it's while so you're natural. inside of me, do you know? And you're like, I'm so pressure? sorry. Or like, if I do it, you know and you're how much pressure is it, you're inside happening? of me. You're exactly. You're you so and I are having pressure. the most one of, of the most intimate moments fart. you can have. What of the course, you're gonna quee. Exactly. Like there's so much pressure and I going love it on. Because the pun All that stuff will happen. It's natural. The pun I is so you. intended. Shit happens. Shit happens, and it's okay. Literally, sex is between two mature adults. If if you can't handle shit, you shouldn't be having sex. Agreed. Buy a vibrator Period. and move on. You're not responsible Period. enough to have sex. Period. Period. End of sentence. End of sentence. So that's what I wanted to get out there. Um, let's talk about sex, sex, because sex is fun. Okay. Sex is fun. Um, do you have a favorite position? I'm a big, okay, listen, there's nothing. Okay. I love a good I like the girl. positions that are closer to doggy because. Interesting. I, there's more going on there. Okay. If I that makes sense. Like but good- again, I am a person who has never orgasmed from a man, and I'm not ashamed to say this. Amen. Again, this should not be a shame for men either. Men should not be ashamed. Getting a woman to orgasm is very, very difficult. Mm-hmm. I, however, have made myself orgasm every single time. Every single time I've done it to myself, I've made myself orgasm. But again, in schools, we are not taught to ha- we're not taught to explain how to orgasm like how it, sorry it should be taught it we it we're not taught, taught how to explain to a man how to orgasm imagine can we just imagine this then, imagine if a man in high school was taught that his no matter if they're straight or gay it that their g-spot is up their ass imagine if imagine if the straight men's faces in high school if that, that would taught, be the dream that would be the dream they'd go home and they'd finger themselves and they'd realize oh one this isn't gay two gay people are great and three, like, if I'm really, truly going to feel something in my body as a straight person, I need to be okay with telling the women, like, I want them to go even further down on me. And, and that's something too, I feel like, like, I don't want to overstep, but I do feel like if a man, and, and like, if a man truly explores, a straight man really, truly explores, and he's like, I really like this fucking feeling, like penetration feels incredible. It's not gay. To, I would, I'm going as far as, my, it's not gay to put on, um, What's it called? The thing with the fucking. Oh my God. Oh, I know what you're saying. The, the thing the, with the, the, the strap. Jesus. The, the, the <laughs> penis strap. I don't know what. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> There's the word for it. I forgot. <laughs> um, I think that's okay. Or even like having the woman put a finger, like, up, like, and if that's not something they're but again, toys with, feel. Then like, move on. That's not the woman for you either. Like, these are important. But again, yeah. something. Something to something to think about for women is women get off more like from toys, and and it is not gay to to be playing with a woman with toys. There's nothing gay about that because guess what? You are bringing them the pleasure that they want. There's nothing gay about that, you know. And and if you are gay, like sure, using toys is amazing. Like it doesn't matter. Like. There's so much emphasis on what's gay and what's not gay. Well, why does it even fucking matter? Whoever you love, whoever you care about, whoever you're doing stuff with, the lines shouldn't, there shouldn't be a line between what's gay and what's not, because guess what? You should be focused on the person that you're with, Mm -hmm. the person that you're trying to please. So it doesn't matter what the fuck is gay and what's not. There's no such thing of, 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 being being gay for playing with toys like that's just so stupid and in a like men's uh, g-spots are in their ass that's okay a woman's clit is probably i don't know you can tell me i would say the majority of women's pleasure spot is their clit and some men it is handle Uh, fucking multitasking and doing some women can come from intercourse some can't right and a lot the sad thing is a lot of men aren't taught that 
And so they just go and they're like the ram. They just ram yeah. in you and ram in you with their penis. And do you know how painful that is for a woman? Like it is not fu- like sure. It I'm sorry. Fun. I like, think I really listen. Fun, this but is if it this... happens every single time, all the time, and there's no change. Ha- yeah. It gets hot so take, boring. Hot take. I think men should have to get pegged at some point in their lives, like somewhere, like because they when they're ready, because they need to understand this shit. And it, like, it could just be by a fucking dildo. It could be by another man. Like, I don't care. Like if you want to whatever, but like they need to be pegged because they need to realize like the same way that they're pleasuring women. Yeah. Like, and I like, and it's different. I, but, like, I, hooked the idea the guy in, I hooked up with a guy in New York city who had the audacity to brag about how amazing he was in bed and he would ram me like a battering ram and at first like it was fun (laughs) but after a while I was done like I was so done I'm like I'm sorry but like yeah it's fun to go as a battering ram sometimes but if if there's no actual pleasure coming from it like so dude, my my grinder profile is the same right now sex is more than just sticking it in if you think that your sex is boring that's literally my entire bio i'm not saying i'm not saying you can't have a sexual preference like top bottom um i used to but like cuz i feel like everyone should just be versatile it's fucking fun that way it should it's fun and it, but, the partner that you're with may want to be able want to switch up at some point yeah and like i just know in life like i'm going to have to have at least a versatile someone like whether if they're verse top or verse bottom like that's okay but like a versatile person like a lot like willing to switch but my my thing is like I need foreplay, I need blowjobs, I need making out. It's one of the sexiest things. Watching cuddling TV like in the beginning too is hot. Playing strip Mario Kart, super random but very attractive, but very fun. Like this shit is the things that like are stimulating, and you just putting like this, right like that, not acceptable for me. Not acceptable. Sticking it in is not the only form of sex. Like. No. It's and ramming is and not fury. The only it's way infuriating. Like, like it's it's very it's a very frustrating thing. Like for a woman, it's not about ramming it in. Like there, we have the G spot on the like, you know like in there. Like you yeah. have to you have to work it. And actually, going slow can be more pleasurable than ramming yeah. sometimes. Like you have to have the. Uh, and I would argue, obviously, the best is a combo of of both. And like of not both. like yeah. Of I don't both, like the word you know? ramming. Like I get what you mean because it makes sense in your context. But what we're well, saying, that's the thing. I, like the amount of guys hard, that I've had, I would say like, like fast and, and hard and like, slow. Not I'm if you've like, ever oh, seen. The, yeah, if you've ever seen the Sex in the City, that's exactly what we're talking about. I think it's like the fifth season. There's a scene where Carrie Bradshaw's like holding onto the thing, and she's just like slamming that, yes, her head on the back of the head. Exactly what I'm. Rough about. sex is fun. There's a it's difference fun. between rough and yes. ramming. <laughs> and ramming, yes, rough sex can be extremely fun. And I'm not saying that ha- having r- rough sex is a bad thing. It's the ramming process where it's consistent and there's no, it's literally the same thing. And there's no like moving around to actually try to figure out how to please the person. Yeah. Like just ramming doesn't do anything. And yeah. And also bragging about how great you are at sex and Don't you can't that. make a woman That's not come. okay in any do scenario. Do not fucking do that. It does not make you attractive. It does no. not make you a better person. Yeah. Please be considerate about what you're doing because you will make women feel extremely yeah. bad if you brag about be being specific. good at sex. Be specific to them. Like the bragging I've actually of had sex. a friend who- It's not bragging of sex. It's more like sex dirty talk. Like saying something like, I like I have a tight hole, that's like that's hot. That's yeah. not bragging. That's just being like, I have a tight hole. Like, are you fucking ready for this? Okay, like, let that's me not let me like, be specific of what I'm saying. Saying like, oh my God, yeah. No, I yeah. Mean, don't be so like, don't hype yourself up and be like ramming like, someone. Aren't I good at sex? Like literally when this guy asked me if you yeah aren't I good at sex? I was like, yeah, you're fine. Like, I didn't tell him he was good. I didn't tell him he was fantastic. I was like, yeah, you're fine. He's like, yeah, I'm so good. And then he would tell me about other women who would brag about him to other women. And he'd be like, he'd be like, yeah, this girl was like, 
they were fucking all night. That's and a they, kink to some she was people. Going so and hard, I'm not gonna and kink. Yeah, they were so loud, and I'm like, dude, don't brag. There's nothing I, sexy about. I'm not that. a kink shamer, and I'm not gonna shame people for wanting to know, like, talking about your sexual sex capades. And like, I think that's a totally fine kink. Like, I think it's. I think I might sometimes get aroused by it. Like if it were the appropriate situation, that is something you talk about prior to doing something. Like, again, even if a one night stand, like when someone's asking, like, do you have any kinks? Then be like, Hey, like, I like hearing about other sexual sex debates. Don't just like out of the blue, like, yeah. and any, like even well, after sex, don't be was. like, I just had and sex with this other woman after, last night. And it was after we yeah. would have sex. He's like, yeah, I'm so great, but he would never make me come. Yeah, and don't talk about. So your, it made me. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Don't like, talk you're about not your, that great yeah. at sex because you've yeah. ne- you've never once made me come. Yeah. So it makes the woman feel. Yeah. Anno- like frustrated. It's not that they feel insignificant. It's that they feel really frustrated because yeah. you can't even recognize or acknowledge the fact that you may need some work, and there's nothing wrong with needing work. Yeah. It just means that you have to be a little bit. Don't talk about your dick size either. Considerate about what's going on here. And I actually had a friend. She contacted me recently. She's in New York City, but she's she was talking about this guy that he started blaming her for not being able to come and making her feel like shit for not being able to come. Again, women are very very difficult to make come. And, yeah. and I get, I almost guarantee you every single time, if the woman's not coming, it's oftentimes due because of the man. Yeah. And again, like it does, it does mean that it, it doesn't mean that the woman shouldn't educate herself on what she likes. Mm. The woman should absolutely educate herself on what she likes, but Same it with doesn't the man. fall I mean, it goes both always ways. on the woman to know what she likes, because guess what? Again, as the woman, we may be able to please ourselves, but we may not be able to teach the guy how to please ourselves because guess what? If we're fingering ourselves, it's very different than actually having a penis come inside of us. Like it's, it's not the same type of feeling. It, it, there's, it's difficult to explain because as of having one or two fingers, there's an entire penis going. Like how are, how are we supposed to translate the feeling of, fingers into penises you know right and 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 that goes the same way for men too like I mean yes you can translate it but it is a little bit difficult because again they're not the same type of body part yeah I'm I've been I mean I've I've been this for quite some time like obviously but I'm such a communicator in general like y'all know but like in bed especially like I tell people like like for me like I love like I've slowly started to love being fingered there is a point in time where I can get sexually frustrated in the bedroom while you're fingering me where it feels not fun to be fingered because I want your dick instead like and I don't know if all gay guys get this feeling like obviously I think sometimes whatever but I I like being fingered up to a certain point where I'm like then I just want you inside of me um and whatnot like and I'm not saying like if you finger me like you have to go inside of me like if that's the game plan that's the game plan like you can finger me and stroke me you can finger me and blow me like whatever like that's cool too I just like you doing fingering and that's it for like a really long time like it's just it gets frustrating um little to a bit about fingering by the way your fingertips are fine your nails are fine <laughs> but there's a way to make sure that you feel like they're retracted when you're sticking it in because a girl fingernails in your ass can feel rough and scratchy and you don't want to fucking fuck anything up inside you um so there's that tea Wally Rena stepped out for a second my favorite sexual position now i reverse cowgirl i've never done reverse cowgirl i've topped and done the reverse cowgirl um and like that's fu- i like that and i would like to try reverse cowgirl no do not slide in my dms this is not an invitation to slide in my dms like okay i'm ready um but to those, 
to the ones that would like to know my favorite sexual position uh, I don't know what the name of it is but I'm gonna explain it my favorite sexual position is involves like looking at that person like if I'm having sex with you I'm most likely gonna want to look at you I think doggy's great I love doggy when you like you're basically like both like on your knees and like straight up and like your neck is like bent so you're kissing them you know what I mean um like regular doggy's cool I want to be oh we should talk about sexual fantasies too um but my favorite is being on my back and like getting fucked that way like if I'm bottoming like being on my back and getting fucked that way I love a good ride (laughs) fucking save a horse ride a cowboy (laughs) I love riding like that's so fucking fun it's so hot to me and here's something that I well, need to here's learn the to thing, I haven't gotten a chance to ride. Yeah, I mean, like, which is, yeah, <clears throat> which is, it's not that I haven't. Okay. So I have gotten a few chances to, yeah. but some of the guys are like, they'll flip me over and it's just kind of like, they don't, con- they don't consider. If you're riding, it's hot if you flip me over, but I think there are certain circumstances where like, I like, for example, I do like riding, but here's the thing. I want to make the, I want to like, for you, like you just said, like, I would like to set the rules of when you flip me over. Yeah. Like, and I'd like to try, like, I like, would like not to always, try. like I'll have a girl, if you want to dominate me and flip me over, I'm okay with it. But here's the thing is, and I need to communicate this part. I need to communicate better with, I like writing and I stop, stop fucking thrusting on me. If I want you to thrust on me, you'll fucking know it. I'll stop writing you. But the point of me writing you is to fucking do it myself. And like get that little action. And also like when I ride, it's either at the beginning to help me open up or somewhere in the middle as well. So I can give the top a break as well. Like it's a top's favor and a bottom's like pleasure. Like just let it happen. Yeah. And if someone wants to ride you, (laughs) you should let them ride you. Like don't, don't start thrusting. Don't flip them over. Like if someone is trying to figure out what they want, like don't, don't try to dominate them like let them because also something and these are some rules you can set some people too. some people are trying to figure out what they like like yeah. they may not really know and actually i changed my mind my position my favorite position is actually when someone lies side by side but facing i've never been section. fucked sideways well it's like if you're lying down in bed and you're cuddling that's my favorite position I've never been fucked sideways. That's nuts. What? I know. It's such a well, it's not crazy. Like in my mind, it's not crazy. Like it's something normal. I've just never been fucked sideways. Yes, it's fun. But like, but but the the whole point of this is to have fun, to make sure that both parties are feeling good about themselves. Don't yeah. shame someone for not being able. And this goes the same way too. Like for girls, like if a guy comes too quickly, don't shame them for that. Like they're probably trying to figure it out themselves, you yeah. know, like they, this is not the, when you are an into in an intimate position that you are in when you're having sex, no party should be shaming the yeah. other party. This is all about experience, intimacy, being able to, sexual to be intimate, you know, to be intimate and not have someone feel humiliated for trying so yeah um so it's really it's really important that that you make this an experience for the both of you and not just for yourself and not for your pleasure and not for your vanity of all things um okay let's see some quick fire questions um because we talked about favorite sexual position favorite worst place so favorite place you've had sex worst place you've had sex and either one to three places you want to have sex okay let's start with favorite my favorite place that i probably had sex was in a classroom um with my ex-boyfriend how do i not know this i thought it was i thought it was fun and spunky and different because he used to he used to do Oh God, he's not going to listen to this, but I don't want to embarrass him or anything, but he used to only do missionary. No shame. And he's like the basic, like, and that was his way of like trying. Wait, to I think that's my favorite position. That's so funny. 
and he was doing, you know, like, and it made, it made me happy that he wanted to branch out and, and that he tried, you know, yeah. and it was really fun yeah. and we had a good time, you know, yeah. um, worst place. I'm trying to think of my favorite. I feel like very basic. I feel like I don't remember. Um, I mean, nothing I did in Orlando was like fun. <laughs> I feel like the worst place. Well, the worst time I had sex was when a guy didn't know how to put the condom on. And I didn't shame him on it at all. I was like, here, like, let me put it on you. Like, we'll figure this out. Like, it's not a big deal. Clearly, he was a virgin. I had no issue with him being a virgin. Um, But then he tried to just stick it in me without doing anything. And I was like, oh, dude, like that really hurts. Like that, I don't, I don't like that. Like you don't just stick it in. Like you've got to do some other things. And then he's like, oh, I think you're just going to have to deal with it. And I was like, I pushed him off me. And I was like, what did you just tell me? Like, do you want me to feel comfortable? Like that is not a way to make a woman feel comfortable. You sound like you're about to rape me. And so then he got really defensive and started talking about how white people have it easy. And like, given I am white and he was Mexican, but it was just kind of like, it was kind of like he in what context politics. Was, but in there what was context? no, I was literally, the context was, I said that I did not like that. That would have floored like, me. I what I would have been like consent universal. No, that would have floored me. I would have been like, I don't. Exactly. I was, I was very upset by it but I kept like I tried to keep my you know my cool and I was like dude like this has nothing to do with what's going on here and he's like well I'm just trying to protect you like I'm trying to make sure that you feel safe and comfortable and I'm like what about this conversation is making me feel safe or comfortable wow and then he like was he like, went down on me. you without going down on you <laughs> exactly <laughs> and he, he st- started bringing race up into the mix and I'm like dude this has nothing to do and he's like well white women have it easy like you don't understand what I've gone through and then we st- he started talking about how like you've never had to work for anything and I was like what is that me? what the fuck is this conversation for uh, if, he of course didn't know this but I lived in an orphanage for four years where I starved and didn't have clothes that fit me nor did I have two sets of parents let alone one so I'm sorry I understand that with race there is a divide and there is a difference but don't tell me that I haven't ever struggled for money or for living because guess what everybody does go through it yes I will say that race is very different like people but it has are nothing, color but, but it has nothing to but do it had with nothing to the do condom with sex it had nothing to do with what the situation was like i'm not i was not trying to to discredit what he was saying but it was so difficult because it was out of a context that had nothing to do with, with the, the situation yeah, that we were fuck. in at the moment like i i understand that but don't you dare use race when you're upset with yourself for not doing what was right for the woman or for your partner or whoever it is do not do not do the victim blaming thing that is bullshit yeah so that was the worst place I had I just think I I don't want to be basic right now but I have to explain my favorite place I've had sex I think is probably my bed and the reasoning behind it is because my worst, like the crazy place I've had sex, quote unquote, the worst place I've had sex is a car in the shower. Um, and the shower, we were standing up and it was uncomfortable for me. Um, well, having shower sex is complicated and I wasn't ready to like. But it doesn't necessarily, it's not it. necessarily pleasurable because you can end up getting water and water instead of it being like a lubricant, it's more f- like friction involved yeah. so it can become very uncomfortable and then the car which was uncomfortable and i've had sex in the car a couple of times i really don't want to do it again unless it's with the right person and we're in the car and we're feeling some type of way and <laughs> we can change my bad memories into a good one because i think there's yeah. obviously like <laughs> i just finished sex life on netflix um i think there's obviously better ways and good ways to do it i've never really done that 
Um, and obviously like a blow job is cool too. The thing with the blow job in the car, you also have to get in a specific like uh, stance because like, to be quite frank, it's uncomfortable. I don't know, at least for me to like, if they're in the, I'm in the passenger seat and they're in the driver's seat, it could be vice versa. But like me leaning over, like twisting my body sideways and like bending all the way down, like that's uncomfortable for me. Um, but that's the I worst feel place. that too, because I didn't really enjoy car sex. So either. I'm, so one, an elevator. I want to have sexual relations Ooh, in an yes. elevator. So I want to have sex in an elevator. Bad. Um, that would be so fun. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Where else would I want to? This is a oh, weird Okay, one this me. is a New York City one. I mean, there are other places like where you could do this, like plenty of other places, but just, I know like fucking every New York City building has one basically, but I want to do it like on the rooftop. Oof. That would be really hot. And I don't necessarily want to have sex in a pool because like, I just feel like it'd be difficult and like not fun, but like, like on the, like on the side of the pool, like if someone's like, if the top's feet were in the pool, but their dick was like, and I was like, I guess it would be, I would, I guess it would have to be missionary and my legs were spread open. And again, I'm just using me as a bottom at this point, apparently. Um, and then they were just like thrusting, but like their feet were still in the pool. Like, I feel like that would be hot, but like, not, I don't know if being in the pool would be that. I feel like, you know, I don't know if this is a myth or not, but I feel like in the pool, when you have sex, I feel like it'd be a lot slower. I feel like, cause you have to pu- like push in and out and you have to like be floating, yeah. like, I mean, but necessarily also, not floating. But as like, much as, as much as doing sex in the water sounds fun and appealing, it actually really isn't. Because I would love to have sex in a hot tub, but that's yeah. never gonna happen because it's not it's not I've had slight sex or I've had slight sex in the hot tub, but not full on sex. But I don't there's something about it. That's my number one. My number one is an elevator. My number one. I don't one blame is an you. Elevator. That's a good one. And I don't I don't like okay, yes. Would I want full blown sex in an elevator? Yes. I kind of again I watching sex life changed my life. I like I'm okay with me just being fingered in an elevator or me fingering somebody else in the elevator and like making out with them like that. That's hot. <sighs> Give me a where's the fucking a hundred and something <laughs> story building? I need to get in an elevator with someone just you know, just me and that person. That's oh hot, my god. Yeah. Also, so something great. I do want to bring up um before we completely get off the topic of what's the worst sex you've ever had um just a little fyi for not just you know dudes but also for women porn does not teach you anything about sex do not watch porn and expect to learn anything because all of that is fake it's made for you to get horny and turned on but none of that none of the ramming that you see none of the the weird like squirting that you see from women is accurate yeah because women don't squirt like that we don't they we, can but I it's, mean, it's few and far not between like that like, though not not like yeah. where they shoot out like that's not like yeah we can just we we it can come out of our bodies but not in the way they make it look like it just pours out yeah that that does not happen yeah so, so don't rely on porn to get your education on how to have no. sex with a woman or no. a man or whoever. It That's is exploring yourself separately with. and then coming together with somebody and also explaining that like, this is like your first time, whatever. And like, you'd be yeah. like to... And your first time can just be sex yeah. and that's fine. Like if that's what that is, that's fine. Like not really getting into the pleasure, the super pleasure of it. But like the second person, then you're like, okay, I really want to explore. Like that's totally fine. And that's like the way it should be done. I mean, cause like you have to have someone, you're, you're going to have sex with somebody um, needing to explore, which to be quite frank, this is a whole other topic. We're not going to get into it because you know, it's already. Yeah. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to state that because I didn't want, right. right, right. A lot of people go for porn for education. Do not go for porn. What I was going to say is like, this is a hot take, um, but this is why I could never 1000% could never. The fact that I was supposed to, as put in this social constructive box of being conservative Christian to not have sex before my wedding day. That shit is crazy. But it's that's a hot bullshit. take and I won't go into it because that's a longer bullshit. topic. Do, I'm sorry, but 
but not having sex before marriage was was not an original thing i mean yes it, okay the the point is that is meant to control women specifically to control women not the male sexual I orientation agree. it's all about controlling women agree. and to make sure that they stay a virgin yeah for the first time that they have sex be so unquote, i'm sorry yeah. do the whole thing of waiting till marriage if you want to wait till marriage whatever like there's no judgments Teach but i home. just yeah. want you i just want you to be aware that that is specifically to control women to to make them to keep them a virgin for you know it, it's like I it's just so can't imagine like sick, not actually it's a sick reason yeah. there are sick reasons behind the origin of that yeah um but that going to say like if you want to wait till marriage again that is your Judgment. choice right, you do course. so don't let anybody tell you otherwise yep. but again something that i will warn you about is if you wait till marriage you will have no sexual experience which means you will have no idea how to sexually please yourself or well, sexually please your partner but like partner. i sexually you're like i'm sure a lot of people explore themselves but to be quite frank like you know when you some people don't you, some you, of my but friends no, no, i understand that but like you take have a test not you take a test themselves. like online like a buzzfeed quiz or something and it tells you at the top like you're 23 percent done now you're 48 percent done now you're 67 percent done like that is the like exploring yourself is a huge part but there's still more and you need to like i just feel like there's this need that you have to you, there like you don't have to again like no judgments if you do like, well here's, here's something with but, exploring yourself it doesn't actually teach you how to bring pleasure to the other person and no, this no, goes no, no. that's what i'm end. saying but no but but you still need to be able to figure out what you like and shit but like that's exactly. but like that's the 33 like percent that's but there's but the in the faith yeah. and religion a lot of people like in christianity when they say no sex they mean right. no oral sex they mean no sex sex and they mean no touching yourself so it's You're not to... just yeah you're not not really i mean some pe most people do anyway but technically you're not supposed to you're yeah. supposed to leave all the pleasure to when you have sex yeah. for the first time and yeah. and that's that's the tricky part and i I've would actually, die because it hurts so bad i've known people <laughs> to to wait for all of that yeah and it it it's gonna be i guarantee you it's gonna be a disappointment when that's you get make into or break. that the first time yeah with the person that you marry and it's gonna take years for both and i mean like years and years to figure out what you both like and what you yeah. both enjoy and what brings you both pleasure and it's gonna be painful yeah and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cause a strain on your relationship it really is yeah crazy as shit um, do you have any others that you were thinking of? I would like to be a uh, part of the mile high club, but I, there has to be a specific scenario to do it in. Either I have to do it in first class or it's only going to be a blowjob in a bathroom. I don't, there's this romanticized thing about the mile high I'd club like on TV shows. I'd like to have sex in the bathroom of TV. an airplane. The only thing is, I just don't feel like it's that possible for both of you to finish like, I feel like it has to be a blowjob. It has to be. Like, I don't, well, there's, I feel like there's this... not enough room to like go at it. No, there is. And think about a blowjob. If you were to do a blowjob and you hit turbulence, that would be painful. No, I'd be okay. Not, not necessarily. If you hit hard turbulence and you're trying to find grip and you slip, it only takes like what, a few teeth to accidentally scrape. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but I think I'd still be okay. It's more, no, trust me. I think it, the turbulence, would, be better wouldn't, to have I think the turbulence would make fucking fun, though. It would make it that really would, fun. That would be that's why, that's, why, that's why I think that it would be more fun to have, like, actual intercourse than to do a blowjob, because a blowjob, it only takes one wrong bump, yeah. and you could be I can see that. literally biting down on their dick. I can see that. I'm trying to think Whereas of any other sex, place. I don't you know why. Slip out, if you slip out, you just 
go back in and it's Listen, more just like some public like, shit which hole is it going in you know just some public shit like is very i think it's hot like there's something about the danger of it that's just it so is it's the danger in. of being discovered and that's yeah. why like being in the classroom was so fun i was gonna say like maybe like a picnic, because it was like shit like is someone gonna come in i know oh my god is there any other place specifically you can think of no, I think the elevator and the airplane bathroom are my two. Just like, just like fun hotel places. sex. Oh, oh yeah, hotel sex would be good. I'm not very particular on the place. It's more of the experience, but like the experience. Are there just some places that I still like want to have sex in? Like well, my place. number one was a hot tub until I found out that it. Is there's a way you can get then there's a way you can do it like i said like but the once same you get the water the, once you get water in it's very well no but i just mean like the same situation with the pool kind of thing like 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 half like you're not in the water like you're just like on the side um yeah but i want to be in you know but that's i mean who wouldn't who wouldn't um that's funny because it's actually at least for women i do sex in a bathtub really well, that's. I mean, thing. it is like, kind of the same concept. It may concept, work. It, it may but... work for for you, but yeah. for women, it's actually very, very bad to have water go up yeah. in there. Yeah. And so, if you're gonna have it in a hot tub, which is worse because it's chlorine, right? Jesus. You know, like it's it's again like as much as I want, like that's where I want to have it. I can't because yeah. it's actually really bad for your um. Wall, like your uterine yeah. walls i feel like drive-in sex would be fun <gasps> yes no that would be so fun like like you have the back of the car and you have to like oh my god oh like a bath like so in my head like i would love to have sex in the bathroom but i, I don't want to sound like so privileged for this it has to be a bougie ass bathroom. I'm not having sex in a club bathroom where it's like gross and dirty and nasty. Like, especially like if I'm doing things on my knees, bitch, I like, I'm a little bit of a clean freak. Like I can't that like it would, the only thing that I would think about is the germs and like, it would stress me out. Like it has to be like a clean, like some sort of like Ritz Carlton bathroom. Like I know how bougie and privileged that sounds, but like I'll take the L on this one. Like I, like I would like to. But it's so much more fun when it's like a bougie bathroom, you know? Yeah. Um. Is there any other like sex related thing? Like, again, like there's obviously a lot more to sex and like, I want to talk about the other things that I'm into, but we've already been going for like an hour and a half. Yeah, um, I should. So I is there anything else soon, that you can but... think of like really fast that like is like a fun question? Favorite okay. place to be touched? Or, like, oh, that's kiss? a good one. Yeah, yeah. I'd say I like any, oh my God, any guy who gets stimulation from their nipples, I like giving. I think for me, I think there, there's, I, I know some people are grossed out by it. I know some people are, but the tongue and the ear thing, some people are just so good at it. And it, there's something about in it. The I also ear like the, just around the ear, like in it for, I'm not in it, but I, there's something, the there's like some the weird yeah. pressure point that's behind the ear. Yeah. That this if they do a, it just right. It's, yeah, it gets me going. That and like the pelvic area, like right next to your penis, like where. It's oh like, yeah. You're so that close, but not so there. Ah! You're like ah. It gets you going. That shit's crazy. So is yours yeah. your ear, or do you like like the next good two, but it's still not top ear. tier? Okay. It, it's not like in, but it's behind. Okay. Like it specifically has to be behind yeah. my back. Have you tried it any kinky actually, shit? What? Have you tried any kinky shit? Yeah, I've tried tying up. Okay. I've done that once. I'd like to do it more. Yeah. It um, was it was fun, but I think the person that I did it with just he was too. I'm innocent. gonna tell you something that I'd die to try. Because <laughs> I have a vibrator. I want someone to well, I like I want someone to be and like some people are offended by like if you bring a vibrator out. You should during be. sex. Like no. I get no, 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 but like to contain like. It's a continue. I'm not saying you're bad at it, or I'm not saying I don't want you inside of me. They take it I as a want, I want yeah, to. Not... I want it to be an addition because here's my thought. Yeah. I want the vibrator. That's what up, I want too. I want the vibrator on my ass, and I want the man riding me. That shit would be insane. Yeah, that would think be about nuts. I'm the bottom and the top at the same time the without woman, even having a threesome. What the fuck? Especially for a woman, if she can stimulate the clip while you're going in and out, like that would be yeah that's the ideal 
Yeah. And that oh my way, God. that way, the man or the woman doesn't have to focus on trying to stimulate the clip because I guarantee you that your fingers aren't going to go fast enough to, to really stimulate it. I just, oh my God. And to yeah, get the be best so experience, fun. the best experience yeah. of it. So, yeah. I just, so tried, yeah, I say hell yeah. Just I just do tried it. a new kink, sort of. It kind of went haywire. It's a, it's a longer story. Um, but I tried somebody else's kink where they like somebody else watching, but they kind of jumped in and was involved. So I was like, but it wasn't a threesome, but it was just so weird. And I was like, I try, I don't know. Like someone sitting in the corner masturbating is just so strange to me. I'd be like, hi, like, hi, What's like, that? what the fuck? I was like, okay. Like, I'd rather have a threesome. I was like, I was, yeah. just, like, just I was almost, in, I told you that I was almost yeah. involved. Yeah. yeah. I've never With had a true threesome yeah. before. I've had I it wasn't yeah I have I've been in two but none of them involved like a dick Truth. in me Threesome. or me dicking somebody down so <laughs> it was basically blowjobs taking out like masturbating yeah and them doing something but like I was still blowing like yeah so like but I I mean I, I'm open to the idea I, I'll tell you what I don't want to do because I've oh like you've almost been in threesome I've almost been in two orgies and I thought, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I was such a frail human being at the time too. And I wasn't out like that shit was nuts. It's okay. Like, I was frail too. The when fact I that I thought I didn't that know I what I was doing. Though, but let me I tell you I had no idea what, that I was going to be a part of it. Potentially. Maybe four people. Once it gets to five, like if it's a group, I just, there's something about it that stresses me out. And I don't know if it's jealousy and I'm okay. To, I'm okay to say that. Like, I don't know if it's jealousy or um well once it gets to five not getting people, enough attention like whatever like it just I just don't feel comfortable in a setting with well all once these it gets to five naked. people it's more like there are certain there are groups at that point and it, right at that point it's just like a bunch of people having sex in the same room yeah which again is like kind of the same thing of like the guy watching me I'm like yeah, I might as yeah. well like but like I still don't want like five like you can't do that much with fucking well you can do a lot with five people but like again like you also can't at the same time anyways yeah I digress um again I was in the same position where I didn't know what I was doing I had no idea that yeah. was what the guy's intention was and yeah. then it kind of happened and I was like oh shit I'm leaving yeah yeah which by the way is such an okay thing to do it's part of consent like if you don't feel comfortable at any time you're allowed to walk out yeah, it is very awkward, though, when the guy comes out completely naked and said, are you sure you don't want to join? And you're, like, fully clothed yeah. and you're, like, uh, yeah. no. It might be an awkward conversation, but it'll be the best no you'll ever, you'll feel powerful as fuck. You're, like, I didn't do this. I feel good. Well, also, the guy, no. the guy was an absolute dick and yeah. he would... I, he was out of college for like just because you have something three doesn't years. Mean you should be. No, he was out of college for three years, but he kept coming back to the college campus to prey on women. Oh well. And okay. he, so so I it wasn't necessarily saying no to the threesome. It was yeah. saying no specifically to him. Like yeah. I would be interested in potentially trying one in the future, but I'm not like super overjoyed you guys? to necessarily try it, but no probably two not two guys because I don't want to I don't I'm not a huge like in the mouth kind of girl got it right yes we so, talked about this yeah so I'm like so it would probably be like a guy and a girl okay because would... I I wouldn't have problems with making out with a girl or like oh kissing yes okay I was like I don't know how that would fare but like really. I I don't want to dick in that mouth kind of thing yeah. like that's I don't want to be rammed from both well, sides she can do it get it like ready and then he gets living in you it'll exactly. be perfect it's great yeah Good. Wow. <laughs> love that wow but yeah a weird conversation but again like this isn't a guarantee I don't know if I will necessarily feel comfortable yeah. with it but look if we're not it's talking something about that it, I've thought should, about yeah like this is the I love these types of conversations yeah like seriously so like Anything we've talked about, I want to hear your thoughts like about the serious stuff. I want to hear like your favorite worst place, like TBD location that you'd want to have sex in, your favorite sex position, whatever. Like talk about this shit. Um, wait, really fast before I go, because I was going to say, hey, like you're uh, like, I always say this, like if you don't feel comfortable, but still want to talk about this stuff, because I think it's so important. You're allowed to DM me like I'm OK with you coming into my DMs and like being like, hey, I came from your podcast. This is what I would like to comment like I 
I, you know, I want to have sex in an elevator, just like you. I'm okay with you DMing me something like that. It is never, 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 never okay to send nudes, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, don't do that. It's unsolicited. And I don't like it. If I ask for it, that's okay. If I don't ask for it, it's not okay. Um, And I want to say the same thing. If anyone wants to reach out to me and get advice or like potentially talk about something that they're nervous about, you're more than welcome to. Again, do not send me nudes. I am not into that. Do not send it without my permission. Yeah. And I will never ask. We're okay with compliments. Don't need a compliment. Over social media, I will never, ever want nudes. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot if you'd like to as well. We don't mind. We don't mind. If you think we're cute, go ahead. You could DM us. You could DM us say that. And be like, hey, girl. I'll be like, hey, bitch. What you doing? No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Uh, I think that'll wrap it up for now. Yeah, just During so one conversation. Though, yeah, I want to say that I I love the fact that we did it both in robes. In literally yes, I, we forgot to say that in the beginning. We did this. Uh, I mean, it was like, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, in, like, do you want me to do it in a row? Like, do you want me to be professional and like, I tell her like some of the vibes that like, you know, I do kind of sometimes like plan an outfit or like whatever. Sometimes I just, you know, come on here and just start the podcast without even a thought. Uh, But sometimes like, you know, we do themes and whatnot. And because we're talking about sex, we both put on a robe. And the interesting thing too, is I was already in a robe. I just didn't want to change out. So that was more of the the question of should I pop up on here with a robe, but then it fit the conversation perfectly. So so perfect <laughs> um but like we said respectful dms are very much yes uh, keep them keep them pg them. for me at least yeah matthew for me you can go pg-13 because like the sex conversations might seem like pg-13 so i'm oh, okay with oh, it as okay. long as you don't well, send I the mean, nudes that's the extra layer and don't be creepy yeah, yeah, that's what don't I mean. compliment somebody on their fucking whatever but yeah, yeah. No. What I mean by PG is like in conversation, we can talk about more if it's specifically about questions and the topic that you have on the podcast. Yeah. PG, I, I'm talking that that's what I mean by PG. I don't yeah. want it to get like escalated or you start yeah. sending nudes or like get creepy yeah. in some yeah. way. Like that's not what I want. Yeah, right. Agreed. Okay. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, let us know what you think in the description, uh, the description, let us know what you think in the comments of the YouTube video. If you're listening to us on any other streaming platform, uh, our DMs are open. DMs are in the description, or like I said, you can always take yourself from Spotify from, uh, elsewhere, um, and go over to my YouTube and, uh, comment, like I said, um please go ahead it is free i always forget to promote myself go ahead that hit that subscribe button i'm trying to get my subscriber count up go follow in uh irina's socials all of them are in the description is there anything i know we talked about last time but is there anything you'd like to promote specifically um no Okay. I'm more on Instagram than anything else. Yeah. So if you want to Which by the way, me. it's one of the best Instagrams out there. Go fucking follow. It's great. Uh so I love you guys. Um why do I always forget the fucking outro? I never have a fucking intro. Thank you for listening to Deeper Conversations with me, your host, Matthew Silvers with Irina. Uh, and we will see you guys next time. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Bye.